To begin with, the Indians were here and they thought it was their land and we had to kill them and scalp them and chase them into Oklahoma. And then the damn Yankees made us free our slaves. That was tough enough. And then we had a depression and a dust bowl. And now we've got this atomic bomb plant here which is just ruining the neighborhood. And I, it's something we don't need and we don't want. The death factory is named Pantex, meaning in the panhandle of Texas. But it really is just a, it's just, just kind of a work relief program where they manufacture atomic bombs. It's the largest facility in the world that manufactures atomic bombs. And where they, now they are disassembling atomic bombs very unsafely. And in my mind, in the exactly wrong place. And I'm in favor of moving Pantex to that little center square in the Pentagon. Now that we've moved our military down, we have plenty of room in the Pentagon to take the bombs apart and not have to take them apart here, where there are still a few nice people, despite having freed our slaves, having had to kill all the Indians, and having had to have the Wittenbergs live in our town. One wonderful thing about Amarillo that I really like is that it's not an unlawful town. It's not a town where people go around being bandits or robbers or things like that, except for the Wittenbergs and the federal employees. It's a lawless town. We're a long way from anything else, and it's a town where we happen to believe that the rules don't apply to us. And I don't believe the rules apply to me. I believe the rules should apply to me if I make the rules for myself and if I want to obey them and if I change my mind, then they don't apply any longer. Most of my fellow citizens agree, so we live in a mild state of anarchy, which is the most pleasant way to live in. And no one seems to give a damn because we're way out here in Piddly Dunk. So we do what we want to in Amarillo. It makes it a nice town to live, providing you're willing to live lawlessly. The people that work at Pantex all wear really ugly clothes. They're the kind of people that roll their blue jeans up like this and think it makes it look like a formal suit and the kind of people that buy their suits at Sears. Double pleat people. Church going people. God fearing people. The kind of people that if you were going to get on a bus between here and Tucumcari and there's an enormous woman and she's sweating under her armpits like that just beads of sweater coming out of her armpits and she's holding a gutty sack and the gutty sack is full of chickens and the chickens are look, 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 look and its mouth bad and the air conditioning is broken and the chickens are shitting all over the place and right across this thing is a, is a nice kind of well-dressed regular sized regular covert re regular dressed Pantex employee you'd always sit next to the fat woman and the chicken chickens rather than be anything to do with the Pantex people they're the kind of people that don't belong and should not be in the Texas panhandle they're the kind of people that if anybody in the world from Robin Hood on down were recruiting high ha highwaymen they would always be chosen last they're rotten and dirty people they're nest featherers and we don't want them here they're worse than Wittenberg Almost. And it's my opinion we just can't wait for a little bit of nuclear shelling between North and South Korea and then all the people having their skin flake off and their fingernails fall out and vomit their stomach guts out and all of that that we're all just really hoping for. it. Like everybody's hoping that, that Los Angeles could have a 12 on the Richter scale today. It'll make great television. If we just could have a good east-west atomic war right now like between Canada and uh, Poland or something like that, the prevailing winds would kill all, just everyone in the northern hemisphere. That might wake up the people in the southern hemisphere so that they could ban atomic weapons. The problem is in the ne if they're getting so easy to make and so easy to deliver, you could probably get Microsoft to do it, probably be able to order them from Federal Express, that right away we're going to have some kind of a, a north-south war from North Korea to Nigeria or something like that. And that will kill all of us. And that will kill not just Homo sapiens, but if you understand the theory of evolution, it will kill intelligent life on Earth. Because at that certain moment when life began to evolve, we're the ones that began to evolve with intelligence, just like rabbits began to evolve with long ears or praying mantis with long feelers. And most people think that no other intelligent life, of Earth would ever, life on Earth would ever come along. That means we can never have another Jurassic Park. It would be really sad. Amarillo. My life and your life is boring and humdrum. 
And we wake up every morning it's just the same as it was yesterday. And it's only through art and invention that we reinvent our, ourselves every morning, that we look in the mirror, that we part our hair new, that we shine up our teeth, that we smile and we say, it's a new world, little man, and I'm going to go out and have a great affair today. That's what art is. I'm building a system of unanticipated rewards. And that system of unanticipated rewards do not go in museums and are not to be seen by the public when they know they're seeing them. They're to come as surprises. The Cadillac Ranch is to come as a surprise to people who are hitchhiking or bicycling or driving across the country. I hate art that's in museums because the museum programs you to like it or not like it. Recently, a group of art rebels in Amarillo who I have been in touch with, known as the Dynamite Museum, have been putting up signs. Signs in, on lonely roads, signs in front yards, signs in, in on other people's property. The clients signs claim squatter rights and the signs are crackpot. They mean nothing, they have no significance, and they are not important. And that's why they're the most important thing we have going for us in any kind of visual impact communication that you can get from a car. If you think about it, the only kind of art left that you're going to have a first impression of and not have to see a picture of it on television or in the museum is art that you see in time and space and you have to be there and alive and moving at that time to see it. It's like a happening and if you're driving in a car and you see a sign for the first time that is like seeing something for real. Look out friends, here's Leon. Take it away boys, take it away. I've, I've been in jail for a total of about 17 months so far, and I... Probably we're going to have all kinds of, of horrible wars and, and wonderful mutations and the freak shows are going to get great because North Korea will have a war with Pakistan or something like that and in my lifetime we're going to have three-headed babies that can play basketball when you go to the circus. I mean, we're really going to have some first-class freaks.